the Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Welcome back to the Jesse Blake Sports Report. Whether it is your first time here or your last time here, or somewhere far in between, I appreciate that you are here right now so that we can all be tortured by the 2023 Toronto Blue Jays. On Thursday, I was out. On Sunday, I'm back in. The Toronto Blue Jays just swept the Boston Red Sox in a three-game series. They are a game and a half up on a playoff spot. They currently sit in the second wild card spot in the American League. The Texas Rangers lost three games in a row over the weekend. The Seattle Mariners lost three games in a row over the weekend. And the Blue Jays are comfortably a half game up on the Rangers, a game and a half, as I said, in a playoff spot. They are that ex of yours that texts you on a Friday night that says, hey, we should get back together and you got nothing else going on and you you know you had good times with them and you want to get back together and you say yes and you're back in. That is what the 2023 Toronto Blue Jays do to us. They torture us time and time again and when everything looks hopeless and done, we get back in there and we say, yeah, hell yeah, Blue Jays. Let's make a run at these playoffs. Let's get it and see what we can do. Let's take a look at those three games because the Blue Jays are have been doing this thing all season long, and they did it consistently in this series versus the Boston Red Sox. As Caitlin McGrath of The Athletics so eloquently put it in her article on the Blue Jays win on Sunday, they survive on near-perfect pitching and timely hitting. That is how the Blue Jays won their series versus the Boston Red Sox. And I want to take you back to Friday where Jose Barrios pitched seven innings of no-run ball. He had eight strikeouts and only five hits. And those five hits actually out-hit the Toronto Blue Jays, who only had four on the night. And all they needed was one home run, a three-run shot by Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who all of a sudden knows how to hit home runs again. And the Toronto Blue Jays, they won that game on the back of perfect pitching. And one timely hit. That is how they got away with the win versus the Red Sox on Friday. Let's head over to Saturday, where the Toronto Blue Jays were down to the Boston Red Sox in the bottom of the ninth inning with two outs down to their final batter of the night. On a 3-1 count, Dalton Varsho tripled on a sharp line drive to center field. And Kevin Biggio scored, tying the game and forcing it into extras, where the Blue Jays managed to squeak out the win. After a great outing by Bassett and their bullpen holding them up, they get timely hitting in the bottom of the ninth, they get timely hitting in extra innings, and they pull out the 4-3 victory. And in today's game, they were out-hit by the Red Sox once again. The Red Sox had nine hits. Uh, The Blue Jays had seven. And in the ninth inning, up 2-1, to Rafael Devers hits a high fastball outside of the zone right over the left field wall to tie the game at twos. 2-2 heading into the bottom of the ninth inning. We get a Kevin Biggio single, and then we get a Matt Chapman triple off of the wall to score Biggio and win the game in the bottom of the ninth. A game that the Blue Jays had great pitching where they barely scored, but they were able to eke out three runs, and, and the Red Sox they held them to two, and, they, allow, and they, they won the game that way. And that is how the Blue Jays win baseball games. When their pitching disappears, they are useless, as evidenced by the Texas Rangers in that entire series where they couldn't stop the bats of the Rangers. This is a team that needs the best pitching in baseball in order to win games. But the most painful thing about this team is, is that they often get it. They often get this relief pitching and starting pitching that is absolutely fantastic. And they're able to eke out these wins where they can get one three one run homer, a triple, and then a couple runs, and they can win these three two ball games, these four three, these three nothing games. And they've done this consistently all year. And if we take a look at where the Blue Jays are right now, They have 12 games left in the regular season. They're going to need about 90 wins to make the playoffs. That's entirely doable. They need to go 7-5. and 89 can probably squeak them in as well, depending on how the teams play around them, obviously. But the Rangers and Mariners play each other. So there are going to be losses on the board. They need about 89 to 90 wins. 6-6, 7-5. You're asking... Some of the best pitching in the Major League Baseball to hold up this roster 
for six or seven more wins in this season. The Blue Jays are a playoff team right now, and it's looking real likely that they're going to be a playoff team come 13 games from now when they're playing game one of the playoffs. It's a matter of how long can you keep this up? They've been doing it for 162 games, and that's going to get them into the playoffs. But is it enough to win and do any damage in the postseason? That's what we're all kind of waiting for. I thought it might I thought it was going to collapse. If I'm being perfectly honest here, I thought come this time of the year, what we're seeing now, you couldn't keep doing this. And the Texas Rangers series was the evidence that this could all come falling apart if they don't get otherworldly pitching. It hasn't come apart completely yet. It was way off the rails come Thursday, and they've managed to steady the ship. So we got 12 games left in this Blue Jays season. Can they go 7-5, and five, pick up 90 wins, get a wild card spot, and then we'll see if they can hold up the pitching to mask the zero offense that this team provides. And if you're down on the Blue Jays, I want to read something from John Boy just to illustrate how desperate other fan bases are. So this is from John Boy. This is what he tweeted today. The Yankees have won 14 of their last 19 games, the hottest team in baseball. Welcome back to the delusion. The Yankees have six more games against the Blue Jays, who are six games ahead of them. Both teams have seven other games left. If they go 6-0 and against the Jays, all they have to do is have the same record as the Jays in the seven remaining. If they go 5-1 and against the Jays, then the Yanks have to win two or more games than the Jays do out of those seven remaining. And then he goes on to say, if they go three and three, then they have to win six more games than the Jays. If they go two and four worse versus the Jays, then nothing else matters. Other fan bases are grasping at straws like that to just get their team into contention for the playoffs. Like you got to sweep the Jays, you got to go six and zero, oh, and then all you got to do is have the same record, and and they got to lose all these games. The Blue Jays hold their own fate here. Is the point I'm trying to make? The Blue Jays are in a comfy position after being in the worst position ever come last Thursday. I spoke about this a couple weeks ago where I said it's hard to react game to game because of how many games there are in the baseball season. You have to see how a week unfolds because so much can change. There's so many games on the calendar that all of them matter individually, but they matter even more as a whole when you take a step back and look at it. And Tim McAuliffe said it best on Twitter where he said it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's 162 games. We're getting to the end where it's the sprint to the end of the marathon. 100% we're, we're at that point right now. But 12 games, a lot can happen. But the Blue Jays control their own fate, which is all you can ask at a team at this point of the season. Go 7-5. and five, Get into the playoffs. Allow this pitching staff a shot at the playoffs to see what they can do and how far they can go. That's all I'm asking out of the Jays. Let's see if they can do it. It's a lot calmer today. I don't know if you noticed, but we had a good weekend and the Jays calmed a lot of the fan base, but we're still, I'm not, I'm not confident in this manager long-term. I'm not confident in the GM long-term. I stand by everything I said about them not needing to be here past this season. I know how I feel about the GM and the manager right now, and it's not good. And there's a lot that could change those feelings, but they are my feelings right now. I, f- I feel like they need to go, but that is a conversation for another day. We've had that conversation already. One thing on the NFL, the Chargers, the Bengals, the Vikings, and the Broncos, they are all 0-2. There's an opportunity we can go to come out of week three. We can be sitting here Sunday night next week, and one of the Broncos, Chargers, Vikings, Bengals could be 0-3. And at that point, I think it'd be fun to hit the panic meter. So especially if the Bengals, like, Chargers, Chargers could be like a huge panic button. Vikings last year, all those one-run games that they won, you know, they probably shouldn't have won a couple of those. Uh, So I don't know how real the Vikings are, but their offensive weapons are so good. It'd be crazy if they're 0-3. The Bengals, given Joe Burrow the biggest contract in NFL history, and then you go 0-3, whew, that could be a disaster. The Russell Wilson arrow and the Broncos, like I never thought the Broncos were good. I think he's over the hill. And if they go 0-3, I don't know if Sean Payton cuts bait there. And then, yeah, I mentioned the Chargers. Justin Herbert, we've been waiting for Justin Herbert to take off for 
for years now and Justin Herbert can't put it all together with the rest of the lineup with the Chargers. I don't know what's happening there. Their defense looks not it looks horrendous to be honest. Um could be time to hit the panic button next week on one of those teams. I think it'll be fun to talk about that. And uh, last thing, what's happening? I do a thing called What's Happening, where I tell you what's happening on SDPN, and you tell me what's happening in your lives. I think the first thing we need to talk about, what's happening on SDPN, the Chris Johnston Show dropped an emergency podcast on Sunday night. Go listen to it. It is an emergency podcast because Mike Babcock was fired before training camp even begun with the Columbus Blue Jackets. You are going to get more of that conversation on the Steve Dangle podcast tomorrow with myself, Steve Dangle, and Adam Wild. Look out for that new episode Monday afternoon around 5 p.m., but you can listen to the Chris Johnston show in the meantime. And in what's happening, I also tell you what's going on with you. And I asked you where you think Shohei Otani will play next season. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim announced that Shohei Otani is shut down for the rest of the regular season. And he's a free agent at the end of the year. And I am in the camp that there's no way that Shohei Itani resigns with the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I think it will be somewhere else next season for like a billion dollars. So I asked you where you think he's going to play next season. Your answers are, James said, most likely the Dodgers or Mariners, but I would love to see him on the Blue Jays. Chris said the New York Mets. Ryan said Boston, let's be honest. Philip said the Phillies. Michael said the other L.A., and Jay Money said he's going to change sports, the Lakers. I think that is going to be a fascinating storyline from November through whenever he signs. I'm going to be on Shoei Watch all fall. So expect uh, a couple of pod, pods on that, especially when he signs. It's going to be, he's the greatest baseball player of all time. It's going to be so exciting to see where he lands next season, if it's not the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim anymore. That's it for me today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be listening or watching this podcast right now. And I appreciate you for that. I will be back Thursday night. Good night from Trump. And that is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.